I used to feel like imposter syndrome. Other people think that I can do it, but I really can't do it. What would surprise people about what it takes to be an Olympic athlete? You have to just be a little bit stupid. I didn't come out until I was in my early 20s, to the shock of no one. <laughs> Not even you. I can read it in your eyes. I'm like, Adam, what were you doing? Have you done stand-up before? No, I haven't. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Your laughter is giving me confidence. <laughs> Hey folks, it's Carlos Watson back with a special episode. Now, some of you know Adam Rapon from his Olympic skating. Some of you remember him from winning Dancing with the Stars, but did you know he's got an NBC sitcom coming? Hey, he stopped by all the way from Finland and it was a joy. Enjoy. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Adam, welcome to the show. Carlos, thank you so much for having me. How is Finland? I have never been. Are they on lockdown as well over there too? Or are they somehow better Carlos, than- Carlos, I'm from LA. And over here, it's another universe. Like they're really worried over here because they had like 300 cases in like one day. I mean, like if we had 300 cases, I, I think there'd be like a huge party. <laughs> right, where they would create 300 more cases, but right. <laughs> right, exactly. If we had 300 cases, we'd be creating at least 600 so we didn't, like, get off the ball. Finland's been really strict about their borders, so not a lot of people can get in or get out. But just to give you perspective of, like, how off the wall it is over here, is, like, buffets are open. <laughs> like a buffet? I'd rather lick the floor in LA than go to a buffet at this point. Other than your wonderful boyfriend, like, did you go over there knowing anyone or was it just the two of you to start with? Okay, so JP has decided that we're gonna start a new trend. And the trend is people are gonna start walking with sticks. Yes, because you burn a lot of fat doing that. Because you burn a lot of fat doing that. It's just the two of us right now. So we've been dating for like three years and I did not see him for like all of 2020 because it was just when the pandemic had started. So as soon as there was a chance for me to come over here, I mean, I can still work and everything like on Zoom. So it's it was so easy. I just, you know, every, everything I do, it just like 8 p.m. rolls around and it's just like light on and I'm on the computer. <laughs> I mean, it's like pretty effortless. So I'm here for one more month and then it's just the two of us roughing it out here, going to buffets. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done stand-up before? Have you tried that? No, I haven't. But you know what? I'm going to tell you something that your laughter is giving me confidence. People have said that I would be a good laugh track, that, that actually my whole family, I have like a big family, and we would be like a good laugh track. And uh, No, Carlos, you have the best laugh. The only thing that's better than your laugh, I have to say, is your teeth. That's it. Your laugh, your teeth, the best in the business. <laughs> Former American figure skater Adam Rapon represented the United States at the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea, winning a bronze medal as part of the figure skating team. You just watched a skater who completely understands his craft. Adam soon became a face of NBC's coverage of the Olympics, where he also used his platform to advocate for LGBTQ plus causes. That same year, Time Magazine named Adam one of their 100 most influential people and he went on to win season 26 of Dancing with the Stars. You grew up in Scranton, right? That's where Joe Biden's from? Yeah, we're having a really big year right now. Were you a big Biden supporter or just a big anyone but, but the president supporter? I think I was more involved in this election than I have ever been involved in an election before. Um, so when the primaries were happening, I canvassed for Elizabeth Warren. Why her? Why was she your favorite? I loved Elizabeth Warren. I still do. And I, because um, one thing I think she did for me was really break it down where she stood and what her plan was. She had a plan for everything. And I loved her energy. I love how quick she is and she was during the campaign. I just think she's like a really fabulous person. And I think that she'd be a really good person to be in charge of anything. We're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, indeed across the world, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith in tomorrow. Obviously, I'm very excited and happy to have Joe Biden as president. I think he's a really good 
person. And I think like that's really important right now is that we have a good person in office. And I think that Kamala Harris is another really good person. And um, I also think that her presence in the White House is going to inspire a lot of people to become involved in politics. And um, for a lot of people who have never seen themselves in that position, I think a lot of people are going to see themselves in Kamala Harris. So I'm, I'm really excited for the, the next administration. Would you ever uh, run for office yourself? No. <laughs> well, no Would you, you run with like me? That? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not I doing would. that. You know what? Maybe you'll run for office in Finland. You'll be. You know what? Never say never, because my my boyfriend is always saying he's like, you're gonna like be in politics one day. I don't see it for myself right now, but I would never count it. I would never count it out. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Do you skate at all anymore, or is that all part of your past? You know, competitively, it's like all a wonderful part of my past, but I do skate every so often when I get the chance to. I mean, my dream was that I would get to skate outside and. Finland, but because of the coronavirus, it's like, you know, not a lot of places are open, but I do have my skates here just in case, you know, something freezes over. So what's gonna happen next? Are you are you gonna do more TV? Cause I have to say, you are one of the best guests I've ever seen on TV. I saw you with, <laughs> with Ellen, that was fun. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw you with Andy Cohen. It really loves being here and like drinking. <laughs> Who's your favorite uh, interviewer? Who did you actually enjoy being with of all those folks who interviewed you? Well, I'd say right now, this is my favorite interview because you're trying to push me into stand up. Don't twist my arm. <laughs> and um, one of my favorite interviews I've ever done was with um, Stephen Colbert. One, I always loved watching Colbert. And um, I got to meet Reese Witherspoon there too. So it was like two like things at once. Um, can you hold this, dear? <sighs> and you know I'm all about a good deal. Like two for one, it was just fantastic. Were your parents athletes? Were either of them? figure skaters at all, or, or did they do anything athletically? My mom was a dancer, and she had a dance studio when she was younger. And then my dad was a baseball player, and he had big dreams of me also being a baseball player. When I grew up, the big present my dad gave me was this like porcelain figurine of like some kid like at plate ready to hit a ball. I think the porcelain fact speaks for itself. It never came <laughs> to fruition. When you came out, were they uh, supportive? Were they not supportive? What was that conversation like as a kid? Well, you know, I didn't come out until I was like in my early 20s, um, to the shock of no one. And um, <laughs> not even you. It's actually shocking to you that I came out so late. I can read it in your eyes, Miami. Yeah, it's crazy. You know I'm like, Adam, what were you doing? <laughs> you're like kind of off camera. You're like, is this guy serious? And I'm like, I'm dead serious. I didn't come out until my early 20s. You're like, goodbye, Adam. You're canceling me. I'm canceled. Um, <laughs> I'm gay, OK? But it's not a big deal now. Um, but basically, when I came out to my parents, um, you know, I, I was really lucky because I have a really great family. That was almost like 10 years ago. So it was a different time. I think that, you know, my parents were scared for me for like how the world might respond or what my life might be like. But they were really incredibly supportive right away. What you should be able to do, you should be able to do a wall jump like this. And maybe it's hollow. So how did you find skating? Did you find it on your own or did your mom, who loved dancing on ice, let's do this? I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and the winters are brutal. One winter, I just asked my mom if we could go skating and I hated it so much, but it was like every winter I had forgotten that I hated skating until one winter, I really loved it. And I kept asking my mom to go back and my birthday is in November. So I got signed up for group classes as a birthday present. So that's how I got started in skating. He's only been skating for three and a half years. 
but 13-year-old Adam Rippon has a lifetime of experiences. So how did you get good? Were you one of those Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hour people or was there something about you that made you really good at figure skating? I think when I was young, I, I progressed pretty quickly because I started when I was 10, which is a little bit later than a lot of like elite athletes get started in a sport. For the trajectory of my sport, when you're kind of in your early 20s is when you should peak. But for me, I really didn't peak until I was in my late 20s, almost 30. And I think that's because it's really that 10,000 hours that like pushes you over the limit of like, you have the experience, you have the time, you've spent so much energy doing one thing. And I really think that helped me to be a very good skater. Can you literally tell the difference between you in your mid 20s and you in your late 20s? Were you like, I'm clearly better now? I was mentally so much stronger when I was older because I had missed out on making the Olympic team twice before. And I think it took me, you know, skating for a while to kind of go through all of that to really realize like that's where my true passion was. You think the biggest difference in you not getting in one Olympics but ultimately getting into the next was in part that you relied relaxed and you were more joyful? Is that what I'm hearing? I would say that the biggest reason that I qualified for the Olympics was that I didn't qualify twice before and that I got to have friends that went and I saw them when they came home and they were medalists and some of them had won and they were still the same people. You know, it was almost like you had seen the like Oz for the first time and all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's just a trip. And I think for every like Olympic sport athlete, you see the Olympics as like, oh my God, it's this big thing. And, and truly when I didn't go and I survived and was fine, it was when I really realized like, it would be great to go, but if I don't, it's not the end of anything. What else, Adam, would surprise us to learn about Olympic athletes? You got to be around them over course of a career, not even just the Olympics you went to but even in prior competitions. Like what would surprise most people to learn about what it takes to be an Olympic athlete or how they live their lives or some of the things that happen to them or they get to do? Well, one, you wouldn't believe like what some people can eat because they can just like eat like a horse. Two, I think that like you have to just be a little bit stupid. <laughs> I know I mean being stupid in a really good way, believe me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean is like, you have to believe that you can do something impossible, which you have to be a little bit stupid to believe something so impossible sometimes. And I think like when you're just so fearless and you just totally blindly believe in yourself, you're not all the way there, which I'm not all the way there. We, Carlos, you know it, you've been talking to me for a few minutes, you know that I'm like a little bit off. Take it all in, Adam Rippon. That is the complete package. Were there any interesting tricks or things that you deployed that allowed you to, in those moments of competition, like really rise and kind of meet that moment? Sometimes I think when we get into situations, we're afraid that we won't be able to live up to our own expectations. I used to feel like an, an imposter syndrome, where like, uh, you know, other people think that I can do it, but I, I really can't do it. And I read this article and it was like, Beyonce gets nervous when she goes on stage and she created this like persona, Sasha Fierce. And she, whenever she gets nervous, she thinks, well, Sasha Fierce can do what I'm going to do. So like, I'll just be like Sasha Fierce. And I started to think about it and was like, I can just be like Adam Rippon because I think people around me thought that Adam Rippon can do it, but I was like, I don't know if Adam can. So I would act the way that I thought people thought I was until I kind of believed it myself. And I used to just kind of repeat that about like this persona. And so if I was nervous, like, Adam Rippon wasn't nervous. And I, I really trained and skated that way in competitions for the last few years of my career. And it was like, those were the best years that I had of, my, uh, of being a competitive athlete. What are you doing now? I hear that there may be a new TV show coming your way. Is that, is that true? That is true. Um, so I've always dreamed of like being involved in comedy. When I was um, training as an athlete, um, one of the things that really helped me in my like practices was that like I l had to focus on that I loved entertaining people. So I um, was really lucky because I had this concept for a show that I um, came up with with a, a friend of mine. And I started writing it with these two other brilliant writers and uh, we pitched the show, we sold it to NBC 
So um, we're working on a scripted comedy series right now for NBC, which is a dream come true. Oh my goodness, this is like your George Lopez. Like, are you gonna be like the star of the show and is it gonna be the Adam Rapon show or what are you gonna call it? I don't know if I'll be in it or not yet. What I really love to do is I really love to write. If it fits, if I'm a good fit for like one of the characters that we're writing, then I would never say say no, but you know, I, I, I've just enjoyed writing the show so much and it's been a dream come true and I'm, I've learned so much in the process. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, well, I'm gonna look forward to this new series. Does it have a name yet or no? We actually don't have a name yet. So if you have any good ideas, you just, you call me right away. <laughs> Dreaming fearlessly. What do you say when people pick your brain about how to dream fearlessly and bring that dream alive? Don't be afraid to just try. And I think so many of us are so afraid that we might fail, but we don't know if we will fail. And so if you just try, you gain experience and you gain knowledge of what can you do to have a better result? What can you do to not fail? So there's no such thing as failure if you try. There's only failure if you don't even give yourself a chance. All right, I want to do rapid fire with you here. I'm going to hit you with a few quick things. I want your first reaction. <laughs> Who's your favorite? I'm Who's your favorite? <laughs> but you're ready. You're Adam Rapon. You're ready. You're you're good. You're good yes, with this. Yes, that's right. I'm always ready. Uh, yes. Who's your favorite comedian? Sarah Silverman. Your favorite book or your favorite writer? My favorite book is Beautiful on the Outside by Adam Rippon. He's a great writer, great guy. Best advice you've ever gotten about love? Oh, um, love yourself first. Hey, Adam, thank you. I really appreciate you. This is so fun. I knew this was going to be a good time. Thank you for coming. Carlos, it's so my pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope my um, Wi-Fi connection wasn't too much of um, a hassle. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I had seen Adam in other places, but what a good guy, what a good spirit. Just enjoyed him all day long and really learned from him. I like how he talked about not making the Olympics twice and how he turned that into something good. Really interesting to hear him talk about his own Sasha Fierce story. I'm gonna think about that a little bit because we all get nervous in our own ways. And I can't wait to see what happens to him as a writer and comedian. I think he's gonna be really talented. I'm a big fan of his and Adam, if you're hearing me now, we're having brunch when you get back, but it won't be a buffet. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this show. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your good people about the show too and enjoy the podcast. I'll see you soon.